But first, we are learning a lot more about the life of the accused 14-year-old Appalachian High School shooter. First, a prior threat identified by the FBI that led law enforcement to speaking with the shooter and his father more than a year before the massacre. And now the 14-year-old's mother is speaking out. What does she have to say about what happened? We take a closer look. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. We're going to talk about the Georgia case, the Appalachian High School shooter. But before we start talking about all that, you always have to take a step back and remember what happened and remembered that their lives mattered, the four victims. Because you know I know, once these cases get inside our system of justice, sometimes the victims kind of left on the side a little bit. People don't really focus their attention there, and it's, it's not their fault, but we always have to take a moment to remember if four people should be with their families tonight, and they aren't. Two teachers dedicating their lives to helping other people's children, and then two children who don't have the opportunity to grow up and make their mark in the world. And it's sad and it's tragic and it's, it's what the case ultimately is about in the big, big picture. But as you zoom in, as our system of justice digs its claws into the case, it's gonna be the accused shooter, his life that is on trial, his life that everyone is talking about from all different perspectives and trying to understand why this happened, who he was, uh, what we're learning about uh, what he was saying, when he was saying it, what he was doing, what he, who, what he was doing it with, who he was doing it with. So many questions. And, and, and we have those questions, and they're all legitimate questions. Because one, you've got to prove um, a murder case, four murder cases against him. And number two, we've got to look at the bigger picture and the issue of why these children continue to do this. And we try to take what we can from each tragedy to try to learn something and prevent the next tragedy. But you know, the learning is very limited because it continues to happen. But it's his life that'll be on trial and we'll be taking a closer look at his life. And the, the one place we're beginning is with his co-defendant, his father, who was warned by police. The shooter was warned as well, but it, didn't, it had no effect whatsoever. The FBI tracks down the IP address of someone who made a threat that there were going to be a school shooter, they were going to be famous like the kid from Sandy Hook, and then they were going to take their own life. So this is like mass murder and suicide is what's being discussed on this social media app from an IP address that is connected to the shooter and his dad. It's a prior address where they lived. And dad was told about this. Now, we can argue, and I'll argue a lot, about the tone of that conversation it was not a wake-up call for dad. It was like both sides lulling themselves to sleep and not really knowing what's going on. But I thought the FBI identified this very troubling social media discussion from the IP address from the house. But for whatever reason, nothing happened. There was a, a mild discussion, lasted about 15 minutes, and then it was over. Then everyone forgot about it, including the father, who apparently didn't, wasn't concerned, didn't think it was his son that did it, and decided a few months after being visited by police about uh, his son potentially posting about a school shooting, going and purchasing him a gun. So there's going to be a lot of looking at the father because he's a defendant and he's charged with murder and if he's convicted he'll die in prison so we'll be picking apart everything that he knew and when he knew it now from the video it seems that he was living with his son just the two of them at the house that they were visited by uh, by police but he's also got a mother he's got two other siblings as well and now the mother is speaking out now you notice the photo we have of mom that's not from a beauty contest, that's a mugshot. So she has quite a history herself, and that's part of 
of the, the, the peeling back the layers of this 14-year-old's life, what he was living in, not a justification, just trying to understand it all. Now, prior to this shooting, the alleged shooter texted his mother, and the message was pretty simple but alarming. Quote, I'm sorry. Now, according to the mother, that same morning, the alleged shooter's teacher emailed her about him making references of a school shooting. Whoa! Whoa! He's talking about a school shooting in class? We've got to take a closer look at that. Everyone's going to be concerned about that. As a result, she called the school and warned them of the threat. Okay, can someone call 911, please? Someone? She described all of this in an interview she did with ABC News. Let's take a look. The counselor said, well, I wanted to let you know that earlier this morning, one of Colt's teachers had sent me an email that said Colt had been making references to school shootings. Between my gut feelings, the text messages, and now this email, y'all need to go, like, run to the classroom. It, the, the more we learn, the more frustrating all of this gets. Now, this is all happening in the morning, right? And, and the shooting is very early in the morning as well. It's in the 10 o'clock hour. So I can understand um, to a certain extent how this still could have happened with all these warnings. But, see, nobody's on, nobody's on the same page here. Like, I don't think anyone at the high school had any idea about the police visit more than a year before at his prior middle school about this threat because nobody's talking to each other nobody knows it just slips through like it's like it never happened let's try to um figure some more of this out let's bring in our think tank joining us tonight trial attorney fellow of the american college of trial lawyers and bremner joins us also with us deputy public defender for la county philip dubay and criminal defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, Michael Sterling, knows everything about Georgia law. Um, and I'll begin with you. I look at, the, I, I, look at I, I see three places where failure has to occur here. Law enforcement, parenting, and the school. And, and I'm seeing it to different extent based upon the information we know now. There's more to mm -hmm. learn that there's failure in all these parts. But want to get your reaction to what apparently, according to the mother, is happening that morning. A discussion in class yeah. about school shooting, a mother getting a text, I'm sorry, and then calling the school, and they're not able to react quick enough. Yeah, it's just horrible. And of course, we saw her in a, in a jumpsuit. I mean, she had quite a criminal history, and there's issues of neglect with the child, and she didn't live with the child at the time. And he's a child, he's 14. I mean, how do you coordinate those things? Like you said, call 911. Do we start putting metal detectors in all schools? I mean, this was a new school to him, as I understand it. He, he had transferred from a different school, so he wasn't being, quote unquote, bullied in his school, nor was there any knowledge at the school from the FBI or the family or anyone else that he wanted to shoot up a school. So coordination of those things, hugely important. Database on these kinds of shootings, hugely important. Like you said, we, we need to know why these kids are doing this. I mean, you, when you and I and all the panel here were in school, we had nothing like this. I mean, imagine going to school. I know you all have, you know, have kids, Vinny, and you, with your children going to school. I just can't imagine that you go to school and think, my kid might get shot today. I mean, we've got to do everything we can to stop this. All right, Philip Dubay, criminally speaking here, right, it's the, the shooter and his father right now. Do you see anyone else on the horizon for criminal liability in this case? Not yet. I haven't heard any evidence whatsoever, for example, to implicate mom. However, there might be some criminal liability on the part of school officials. I want to know why they sat on all that intel and just let this happen. 
they can't use as a fallback position. Well, they don't have an SOP, a standard operating procedure for school shootings. You know, we have to deal with it as it arrives, arises, you know, as opposed to being proactive getting in the classroom, maybe sending somebody out to the house, bringing the police on campus, putting everybody on lockdown before there's even a shooting. Once they are alerted that there is the potential for this type of carnage, everything should come to a screeching halt. Otherwise, look what happens. But for now, the only criminal liability I see is on Colt and Colin and maybe school officials. I haven't heard anything yet to implicate mom. Michael Sterling, how do you see all of the liability in this case? And, and are you surprised uh, to hear what mom is saying about what was transpiring that morning, according to her? Yeah, very surprised, Vinny. I mean, typically in these school shootings, you don't get that kind of a warning, right? You don't get a parent getting an alarming text and trying to warn people, hey, look, somebody go check on them right away. Please go do something like this sort of 911 type of response from the parents saying, hey, I'm concerned. Please, somebody go do something. It's my understanding that one of the, they went to go get a student and they, this, a student who had the same name, they pulled their backpack and had the wrong student. And so, Vinny, that, I mean, that's very alarming. The other thing when you talk about liability, and I don't know how far this will extend, but I, I would add a fourth culprit, Vinny, because I live in the state of Georgia, uh, and that is the state legislature uh, who passed a guns everywhere law that took away waiting periods, requirements, all sorts of things that allow you to carry a gun anywhere in Georgia uh, without necessarily having a carry concealed license. Uh, and so you've got, we've got probably, uh, with, with the exception, of maybe one state, the loosest gun laws in the state, that someone his age can be can carry a gun, uh, that their dad can give them a gun for Christmas, and there not be any any restrictions on that. And so I would add a fourth culprit to it, Vinny. And I'm not trying to get political, but I think that the fact that we've got these extraordinarily loose gun laws that allow just about anybody in Georgia uh, over the age of 14 to have a gun. Uh, that is a problem, and I think that's probably a fourth culprit in this. I want to take a listen to the father now on, on body cam. This is the, the response. And as we watch this, I just want everyone to pay attention to not only what they're saying, but sort of the tone of the conversation here. Again, the reason police are visiting is because the FBI identified an IP address associated with this man and his son. It's not the house they're in at this point, but it's a prior address where they had lived, where there was a threat for a mass shooting and a suicide. Let's watch. So we got a tip from the FBI saying that uh, somebody from your old address over there in Traditions yeah. had made a threat to shoot up school. For real? Yes, sir. And your name was associated with that address. So we went over to that address, and you weren't living there, so yeah, we live here. here. Let me get dressed. Sure. So what? Tell me what. You have any kids or anything? Living yeah, here? Colt Gray. He, Colt? Yeah, Colt. He's my older son. How old is he? He's 13. Does he play a lot of video games and stuff? Yeah, he does. Like all the time. Is he here right now? Yeah. But you, you think it's something he might have? I damn sure want to know. Can we talk to him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now look, he gonna get all red face when you talk to him. Just okay. calm, all right? right. So we're having his. Give me. Let me give you a backstory. I'm like trying to figure out what's going on with my wife. She's in the house. So we split. Long story short, for obvious reasons, she took my younger two and went back home to live with her mom. Colt and I rented a house and came here. Mm -hmm. So we've been good. Like, no problems. Um, he struggled first with the separation. All school was kind of sure. so So I've been up to school countless times just tracking with him, you know, like, hey, make sure you're good. They understand what's going on. He goes on. to Jefferson School? He goes to Jefferson uh, Middle School. Yes, so he's been doing really good. Like, you know, in the beginning, he kind of he kind of struggled a little bit. Um, but let me ask this. Do you have, any, do you have weapons in the house? I do. Are they accessible to him? They are. I mean, there's not, nothing loaded, but they are. Damn. We do, we actually we do a lot of shooting. We do a lot of deer hunting. He shot his first deer this year. Yeah. Okay. You know, so 
Like, I'm pretty much in shock, to be honest with you. Well. I'm a little pissed off, to be even really honest with you, if that, if that is what was said. I mean, we've been, I swear to God, we've been up to school. I've been up to school, like, come on, first name. I just was up there three days ago for his finals, make, talking to the principal, like, look. Yeah. Make sure Colt's good. He gets flustered and under pressure. He doesn't really think straight. Can we just, you know, just kind of put your arms around and get him through seventh grade? I just want to make sure he's good. Like, I mean, we're up there all the time talking yeah. to school. Okay. If you talk to that school, they'll know exactly who I am. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because I'm up there that much, yeah, yeah. you know? Checking in on him. Yeah. Sure I just want to make sure he's good. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little taken back by the whole thing, but... I can tell you this, I take that very serious, and, and so does he, as a matter of fact. You know, he's... Say his first name's Colt. Colt, C-O-L-T, yes, sir. I mean, all I can do is ask him. Yeah, well, absolutely. You know, and... Yeah, I want you to talk to him and just, t just tell him. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know anything about him saying like that, and I'm going to be mad as hell if he did. And then all the guns will go away, yeah. and they won't be accessible to him. You know, we. I'm trying to be honest with you. I'm trying to teach him about firearms and safety and how to do it all and get him in, interested in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Like on my phone. You can get him away from those video games. He, exactly right. That's the that's the god honest truth. And yeah. the picture on my phone is him with blood on his cheeks from shooting his first deer. It was just the greatest day ever. Yeah, so sure. he knows the seriousness of weapons and what they can do and how to use them and not use them. So Ten it's four. Kind of Me a, no it's kind of a little bit of a shock. So, in whatever y'all are telling him, please instill in him that what if this is whatever, where this is coming from, is no joke. What's surprising me here in this entire discussion, and I don't know if the deputies had the information or not, that there was a threat for a mass shooting and a suicide. Mass shooting and suicide were part of the community. But I don't know if the deputies had that information, which makes this whole back and forth useless because they're going to ask the suspect if he did it. Like, could you imagine if every investigation was that way? Did you kill uh, so-and-so? No, I didn't. Okay, I got to take your word for it. That's the way this ended. But I don't know how much information that these deputies got from the FBI. I don't know if something got lost in translation. We only have about 20 seconds here. Michael Sterling, I'll let you wrap this up. I, I mean, then it just, I mean, I know Jackson County well. It's next, next to Butts County, like, you know, south of Henry County. This is just, I mean, this is just sort of par for course. So, you know, you, you go have a conversation. So I, I wouldn't be surprised then if they just kind of, you know, knew each other, the FBI gave them some information, and they just said, let's go have a conversation. It's just sort of, you know, for lack of a better term, a good old boy country. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it just doesn't make sense, and they need to do better.